Welcome to your gospel here on Gospel for Grantia. Your gospel is all about making sure that wherever you come from, you'll be able to hear the gospel. Your gospel in Mandarin. 神爱世人, 甚至将他的独生子赐给他们, 叫一切信他的不致灭亡, your gospel aims to make the gospel available in languages from around the world. It's taken from John chapter 3, verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but shall have everlasting life. Look out for more from your gospel at the top of the hour every hour on Gospel for Grampian. Listen dot g for g dot org dot uk if you'd like to catch up with our podcasts then it's podcast dot g for g dot org dot uk thank you for listening hi this is to all the listeners of gospel for gramping wherever you are this is mark campbell from the scottish borders saying have a blessed day god bless each and every one of you take care very good afternoon to you and a warm welcome along to this Community Elements programme. On the show today we've got uh, Brian's good news coming up and then we're going to be thinking about Zero Waste Cafes and uh, particularly about the Go Green Zero Waste Cafe which is held every single Friday at Old Torrey Community Centre. i tell you what, I went along last week and they made me more than welcome. So thanks very much to Betty Lyons and her whole team and uh, of course the folks there for making us so welcome. You'll hear a little bit of the sense of what that visit was like after we've heard from Brian's good news. Good afternoon and welcome along to this Community Elements show with me, I have Brian, and we are actually here at uh, Torrey St. Fittick's Church in the Garden Room, mainly because I forgot the keys to get into the studio, but don't tell anyone that, please. We had lovely tea and, uh, and buns here as well, didn't we? Uh, well, we had more than that. A nice sausage and egg roll. Exactly. It yeah. Very nice uh, and good company. It was very good company. Very nice, friendly people here. Yes. And that's why we like coming. Right, Brian, uh, starting off with tributes. Very good. The family of a popular Aberdeen dance teacher who passed away after battling breast cancer have paid tribute to her, saying she was beautiful inside and out. Gemma McRae, who ran Academy Street Dance Studio, died at Roxburgh House, surrounded by her family. Writing for Facebook, Jimmy's brother Darren said, The family have been truly overwhelmed by all the messages, texts and calls received for Jimmy. She fought a courageous battle over the last five years, never complained once and smiled throughout. He thanked all the amazing medical staff who treated and cared for her, regularly going beyond the call of duty. He also thanked all staff, pupils, parents of both Academy Street and Mile End, her wonderful friends and neighbours. Darren also praised Gemma's eight-year-old daughter, Izzy, who he said was the main reason Gem fought such a strong battle. He said, Shining Star Izzy is truly beautiful inside and out, just like her mum. As well as Darren and Izzy, Gemma is survived by mum Marlene, dad Alan, sister Leanne and partner Barry. Julian Stewart, a long-time friend and dance teacher at Academy Street Dance Studio, said Gemma was a truly inspirational person. She said, It was a privilege to work for Gemma, and she was a huge part of my life in and out of dance. She was bright, colourful, and always happy. She was pretty incredible. Her legacy will live on in her dance school and all the students she's inspired. She was inspirational for her students. She had a beautiful way with children. Everybody loved Gemma, not just her students, but also the parents. 
Gemma was first diagnosed in 2014 and she raised thousands of pounds for cancer charities through events like Dream, Dance, Donate, which saw people from all walks of life taking part in tap, ballet and jazz classics at her studio. Speaking last week, Gemma said, My first wish would be for a cure for cancer, but that's not possible just now. So I'm hoping to give back to the students and parents who have supported me. I had the most amazing life, albeit too short, and I want you all to know you all played a part in making it so wonderful. A £12 million state-of-the-art primary school has been officially opened just over three years since a fire destroyed the old one. Pupils and staff at Canella Primary School in Blackburn enjoyed making the facility's official opening yesterday, alongside invited guests including Aberdeenshire Provost Bill Howardson, who unveiled a special commemorative plaque. The multi-million pound school, which was completed last year, is built over two floors and features bright and area flexible spaces, including a glass-fronted library and seating area upstairs. The process of building the facility was a unique experience for the more than 400 pupils who were moved to nearby Midmill School for 18 months after their old school building was destroyed by the fire on New Year's Day 2016. Aberdeenshire Provost Bill Howitson said he was very proud to mark the opening of the new primary. He added, A great team effort has led to the delivery of an extremely high quality building, on time and on budget, and we're thankful to everyone who has played their part in that. It stands testament to what a community can achieve by working together, right from those dark days after the fire when local people rallied round to offer soup and sandwiches to staff, to the lovely reception pupils received from the community and contour during their time at Midmill. The team at RS Coaches went the extra mile by offering great kindness to the young people on their daily commute, and, by all accounts, colleagues from Morrison Construction couldn't have been more accommodating when it came to tours and learning experiences for the children. This is a big thumbs up to the people of Geary. Specially commissioned work by several local artists is another important feature of the new school. They created a series of archaic plan panels exploring how the children felt about the identity of their community in the past, present and future. Councillor Gillian Owen, chairwoman of the Education and Children's Services Committee, said, It's not only wonderful to see the pupils at Canella enjoying their new school, but also to reflect on what a fantastic learning experience this project has given them. Congratulations go to head teacher Pamela Farker and the staff team at the school who have gone above and beyond to support the children settle in to the unfamiliar and make the most of the opportunities that come with change. Councillor Mark Finleter, Vice Chairman of the Education and Children's Services Committee said, This fantastic new facility has been designed in such a way it is truly an inclusive place for all. It suits the local landscape. It benefits from fantastic design features inside and out, and those involved should be incredibly proud of what they have achieved during the last few years. A city park is hoping to raise funds for a life-saving piece of equipment. Friends of Duthie Park have launched an appeal to buy an automated external defibrillator, and the team is looking to a £1,250 target. Alan Amour, chairman of the group, said, We're a charity and we look at objectives that could help and support the activities in the park. We had a discussion a while back where we agreed it would be a good idea to get this type of medical equipment. Defibrillators are not terribly difficult to operate and they save lives every day. The other thing is that funds for charities are limited right now, so we're under pressure to get the funds needed. We hope to raise what's needed to buy the defibrillator and then train people to use them. The group will be working with Charity St John Scotland, which will teach the group how to use the device. A spokesman for Friends of Duthie Park said there are almost a million visitors to the park every year. 
Having a defibrillator on site greatly increases the chance of survival for anyone who suffers a cardiac incident while enjoying a day at the park. This unit will be housed in a secure box accessed by a PIN number made available when you dial the emergency services. Councillor Catriona McKenzie, who represents the Ferry Hill Ward, said a life-saving equipment will be ideal. She added, defibrillators can save lives and the initiative taken here by friends of Duthie Park to put in place such vital equipment is admirable. The park is one of our city's most beautiful and popular green spaces and seems like an ideal place for to have publicly addressed defibrillator installed. I hope funds can be raised quickly and we'll make inquiries to see if the council can support this in any way. Little chefs at the primary school rose to the challenge of pizza lessons as part of a new cookery workshop. Bairns in the Kitchen is the brainchild of Italian-born but now contour-based chef Sam Park. Through a seven-week programme of cookery classes, she aims to help young children discover new flavours and skills. Youngsters from Manor Park Primary School in Aberdeen joined the chef once more last week to learn new culinary techniques. Already skilled at smoothies and passes, the class of 12 youngsters were eager to learn more and were set the challenge of creating their own pizzas. Head teacher Gil Graham has been closely watching the children's progress and said their efforts looked delicious. She said, I was contacted by one parent who said she had been amazed that her son wanted to try so many new foods. We have received funding from the Pupil Equity Fund, which aims to raise attainments and close the poverty-related gap. The children also learn new language skills from Sam as she explains what the Italian names would be, as well as maths in the weighing and measuring. Emma Alusit, 10, said she would definitely be recreating the pizzas at home for her family and said the lessons were truly good fun. We have the scripture text for today taken from Psalm 51 verse 13, which says, Then will I teach transgressors thy ways, and sinners shall be converted unto thee. Amen. Thank you very much, Brian, for that. I hope our voice is able to last out doing this, but uh, I've come to the school first of all, and it reminds me uh, a bit of a documentary called Back in Time for School that uh, a certain TV channel are running. And uh, it's a historical look of the ways that teaching has, and, and the learning has varied through the ages, all the way from Victorian times up to the present. I love this, this whole idea of being able to cook. They've probably had home economics for some time, but being able to get uh, pupils to not only design their pizzas, but to get to a point of liking foods, perhaps even for the first time. Mm -hmm. And th this makes such a, a difference, I think. Yes, uh, that story about... Uh the, the cooking, really it brings forward the uh, fact that they were really interested in what they were learning and the result is that uh, I mean, this uh, 10 year old uh, girl is definitely recreating the pizzas at home for her family because it was all really good fun. Now she's doing that, she's not the only one. See the, the advantage it is found when teachers combine with the pupils and uh, really join with them mm -hmm. and show their interest, the pupils follow, which goes uh, for what you're saying about the schools over the years, not uh, good teachers inspire the pupils and that. Yes. Uh, I know I had several teachers who inspired me. Yes, likewise. That's good. Likewise. Yeah. There were some teachers who definitely didn't inspire I won't mention them. I just kind of visualise them right now. <laughs> <laughs> now, of course, this dance teacher, Gemma McRae, who unfortunately passed away, but is a real uh, inspiration to many. She, she is what I would call a, a wow person because she was so 
admired by everybody for the help and assistance that she has given to their uh, pupils and uh, and uh, this uh, truly beautiful inside and out that's a fantastic thing to be said about somebody and she actually uh, wrote a, a letter before she passed away and uh, but I don't want to read it out because I may get emotional with it. <laughs> well, it Sorry it, about that. <laughs> it, well, it, is, it is very poignant, but is. you can actually uh, read that. Uh, I mean, uh, Gemma, uh, Gemma does have a Facebook page and uh, that was, I should ask for that one to be put onto her Facebook page uh, uh, on the day of her death. So that was what was done for her. Uh, so that's really, really good indeed. I had actually meant to say something else. And it's got uh, totally out of mind. Then you've got the defibrillator uh, in Duffy Park, which uh, I, I think more public places should actually have these. Oh, indeed. They do a fantastic job. And uh, because the more that there are, the better chance there is that people who do have a, a cardiac arrest can be saved from, from it and go on living their lives as they want to do anyhow. And... Uh, uh, this is an ideal location, Duthie Park, to have one. Yes, well, uh, there should be one in Hazelhead Park and uh, not, uh, <laughs> indeed some of the other parks as well. And uh, there are the friends groups of the various parks who I'm sure could actually raise uh, funds for this. It would be a real encouragement to them, I believe. Yes, uh, and then of course the uh, Kenya School having just opened and... Uh, uh, just great thanks indeed for the folks who have actually been so good to the pupils and uh, to the school. The community well, yeah. joined together and proved that they were a community. I think uh, that's an encouraging story and it's one that uh, when I was reading through the Evening Express looking for stories, that one jumped out. It was a must. These are all excellent news stories. I'm going to have to stop the discussion right now because my voice is going, I'm afraid. Uh, so I'm rather aware of that. Uh, but uh, hopefully next week we'll be back at the same time, the same way, uh, and uh, we'll have another lot of Brian's Good News. Now, for our second community element today, we had an element of food right at the end of... Uh, uh, Brian's good news about pizzas and uh, we have in our second community element uh, another element of food as on Friday I went round to the Go Green Zero Waste Cafe at Old, Old Tory Community Centre uh, was made very welcome indeed uh, I was able to speak to quite a few of the folks there also they, there was a had an amazing band there Brian Ooh, uh, yeah. called the Melting Pot uh, Collective, they call themselves. Oh. And they're a group of about 90, even over 100, I, th I think, people. They weren't all crammed in there, but uh, just a, a few of them came along and uh, played the flute and they played the fiddle and they, they played the guitar and uh, drums and piano as well. It sounds very uplifting. It was very uplifting. And uh, the food that was produced... Uh, was uh, of real excellence. So um, I much enjoyed what I had, even though I didn't have the main meal because I knew I was going to get a meal when I got home. Oh. Anyway, you'll be able to hear that uh, just coming up uh, very soon indeed. This is Gospel for Grampian. It certainly is. Now, we are indeed going on to speak about the uh, Go Green Zero Waste Cafe at Torrey Community Centre. We've got a few other things to mention. And uh, as I said just now, I'm hoping that my uh, voice is going to last out. Um, because when you get uh, a combination of a cold and uh, a little bit of asthma going on, it does become a little bit difficult. Howsoever, let us do what we can. So... Going green at uh, the old Tory Community Centre, they've got their own Facebook page and uh, they provide free hot meals freshly prepared by volunteers for the benefit of the community. Now the meals are created with food normally destined for landfill. So you can like them, which we have done, uh, to find out when the next events will be. Now they run every friday evening between 6 p.m our doors are 
in fact, to open, I think, even from about quarter to the hour onwards. Um, certainly just a little bit before 6 p.m. And we uh, go in and you certainly uh, be made more than welcome. And we've got a little bit of... Uh, A little bit of audio from uh, last Friday evening when I went along and you'll get to hear uh, that folks are really enjoying themselves. Uh, got to speak to some members of a band called the Melting Pot Collective uh, and they were very accommodating and sort of uh, allowing me to come alongside, talk to them uh, very open and uh, they tell me that anyone can uh, join their band and really I understand that no musical uh, acumen is necessary for that just uh, come along uh, some folks were even dancing as well and while I was there they decided that they would uh, would I like La Bamba so they played La Bamba as well and if you're interested you can go and see that on our Facebook page um, and that was uh, posted up last week so you can see uh, some of the band uh, playing away there and it did provide a really good atmosphere for everyone. People were really enjoying it. Now, if you go to their Facebook page, you will see uh, almost immediately uh, the menus for each uh, Friday, which come up. And so the menu for this Friday, let's have a little look at that, which uh, should be really nice. It's a three course menu. Uh, to start is salad, feta cheese, sun-dried tomatoes, smoked salmon, chicken bites, pastrami and pasta. So just a nice light uh, but I think very filling because it's got lots of pasta in. The main course, stir-fried beef, chicken fajitas, uh, Johnny Mazzaretti, uh, vegetable pasta and uh, frittata. For dessert is walnut cake with ice cream and then of course there's tea, coffee and juice and great company. I can tell you, definitely tell you folks it was really good. Now during the course of the evening I took time to uh, have a little chat with some of the folks there uh, and I would started this audio recording only to discover that the, I know some people may say a bad workman blames their tools but the software that we used on the uh, phone to record that had somewhat changed and uh, as I was case of uh, flying on the wing by the seat of my pants and it did end up that I certain people that I spoke to like Betty Lyons who actually heads up the cafe her interview did not, unfortunately, come out. Which was a great pity because uh, what she had to say was really good indeed. One thing she did tell me, as I had asked her about the uh, cocktail sausages, at one point they got given 7,000 cocktail sausages. Uh, and uh, I wondered what they actually did with that. Well, uh, Betty told me that they turned it into a sausage sausage surprise. Probably not very surprising, but they then sent quite a few people away with uh, many cocktail sausages each, uh, and that helped to uh, mop up the rest of the sausages. But uh, as you can see from the menu, it really is very good indeed. And, and these meals are cooked up free. They're cooked up with love. And Betty says herself that the meal is, the cooking is only simple, only basic, but it really is uh, very nutritious it, because it's done not only with simplicity but originality. It's really great for that. I have to uh, really praise Betty and her team because they're doing a sterling job. So anyway, it's Facebook. Go Green at Old Tory. Go green at Old Torrey, and that's uh, the, where the cafe is. Now, the uh, actual Old Torrey Community Centre is based on Abbey Place, which is uh, really in a stone's throw here away from the studio. Um, and uh, it just really go along Crombie Road uh, for a couple of blocks, and you're virtually there. So it's at Abbey Place, just at the bottom 
uh, of the road there and you kind of overlook the harbour as well and you can see some of the cranes and you know you're roughly in the right area. Okay, well let's go and have a little listen to uh, the events or some of the events from the other evening at the Old Torrey Community Centre. Welcome along to the Community Elements show and for this uh, Community Element I've come along to the Go Green Welcome along to the Community Elements show and for this uh, Community Element I've come along to the Go Green Cafe It's a zero waste cafe and it's at Old Tory Community Centre Roberto and we've also got uh, Angela. Uh, Angela, I, I believe you work for Sea Fine and, and, and for, as a volunteer. Yeah, I'm a volu and, been a volunteer at Sea Fine for nearly three years and Sean introduced me to Betty and I came along to Torrey Community Centre a year past last November. Here every Friday, it's a mixed age group, everybody's friendly. We're all here for different reasons, we've maybe had difficulties in the past. But it's lovely, so the volunteers and the food's fabulous. And then there's a bit of music at the end. And it's good, it supports folk, it's getting folk out of their houses and learning about everybody in the community. Although I just recently moved, but I'm still coming back for a Tory for Fridays. And then I'm here on a Tuesday for a sewing club with spell. But no, we we'll like it, it's good. Yes, and your mum went and volunteered you to speak. I know she did. <laughs> Thank you, Mother, for volunteering for me to speak. Anyway, uh, what I can see is that everyone seems to be enjoying it. And could you tell us a little bit about your work at Sea Fine itself? At Sea Fine, I help people fill out forms and they come in. Their benefits may be cut, they're struggling and need food. We'll put a hand them over a parcel try and investigate a little bit more, get deeper and see if there's anything else we can do to help. But lately I've been joining the guys in the warehouse and fixing up orders to go to other community centres. So it's been a good laugh and I've been there for nearly three years. Fantastic. Well, hopefully we'll catch up with you again. But for the moment, thank you very much, Angela. So, Roberto, how did you come to hear about this place and uh, how do you like it? So, years ago, I came here for the first time and uh, I enjoy the fellowship here, the music and the food. And uh, since then, I come not every Friday, but uh, occasionally uh, Fridays. Okay, brilliant. Thank you. Right, we've got Les here. Les, how long have you been coming along to this cafe? In Oh, quite regular, yeah. Yeah, well, well, at least a year anyway. So, yeah, quite regular. Same with a good meal. What's been the best meal for you? Well, I thought we had the night was pretty good. The mince and tarties and the scurly. It was really nice. Really enjoyed it. Yeah. And what was the meal perhaps you, yeah, I mentioned, you maybe liked the least? Oh, I like it. I, well, I'll eat anything, so, no. <laughs> I, there's nothing I don't like, so yeah, I, no. I would eat anything. Excellent. <laughs> yeah. what, about, what about you guys? What what meal did you like the best? Uh, there's no such a thing as the best meal here. They're all good meals. And you wouldn't uh, say you wouldn't dare say anything less. No, no, it's all good quality home home cooked food. Uh, better anything you buy at a supermarket or anything you'll get at a restaurant. And by the look of it, it's cooked with love. Yes, it is. Great. Thank you. And what about yourself? Well, the meal tonight was good. The munchy tarties and the scurly and that, but it's a good meal here every, every Friday night. It's good. They're a good band playing. It's good banter. You're made welcome and that, and uh, everything about this place is good. Great. OK, thank you. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.
<laughs> you mean you are. <laughs> Just a little taste of uh, what goes on at uh, the Go Green Way Zero Waste Cafe at the Old Tory Community Centre based on Abbey Place in Aberdeen. And uh, you'll be able to pick up uh, information about that from our Facebook page, also our website and uh, certainly our Twitter site as well. Uh, just a reminder, in fact, of those particular uh, places. Our website is visit.g4g.org.uk. Some of you may well already be listening through our website, and uh, the correct page for that would be listen.g4g.org.uk. But our main page is visit.g4g.org.uk. Our Facebook page is Gospel for Grampian uh, on Facebook, so it's at sign Gospel for Grampian. And uh, for our Twitter site, the handle is at sign gospel for uh, on twitter so we'd love to hear from you and uh, uh, the posts that we put up through our website also appear on facebook and twitter so if you've got anything going on in your neck of the woods in the next week or weeks um then do get in contact with us and uh, we can hopefully include them as well now, I did actually have uh, a number of what is called in church intimations, basically notices in church of what's actually up and coming uh, from Reverend Marcus Afferman of Woodside Parish Church. And uh, I'll try and make sure that that at least goes up on our website, which is uh, details of services through the Lent period um, and uh, also up to Easter. So uh, one of the things we will do on the station is uh, one of our power hours. We'll be exploring uh, a little bit about Lent, uh, praying into what that means, and certainly about Easter as well, what Easter actually means. And, of course, a lot more than going into a shop and buying a chocolate Easter bunny. It really is a lot more than that. So have a little listen in uh, for that. This is Gospel for Grampian, Gospel Community Radio for North Scotland. Engaging, equipping, enabling communities to live life to the full with Christ Jesus at the centre. <laughs> 